So when we're looking at techniques to help improve extension, as we've discussed earlier, we're going to couple extension with forearm pronation. So those two are going to work together as a coupled motion. We think about functionally, we throw a ball. We don't throw a ball typically like this, right? We pronate when we do our elbow extension. So what we're going to do when we look at performing our traction technique is it's helpful to use a mobilization belt. And I will show this both ways, but if you do have a belt and you're brave, and it's not, it's not hard, it's just a little tricky to get used to, but having a belt to stabilize the distal humerus is so helpful because that's an extra pair of hands. So then you can focus on the proximal ulna with performing the technique and not have to worry about stabilizing above the joint. So if we have a belt and we wrap it around, we can clip it then, and I'll be demonstrating this in a few minutes, so we clip the end so that we have this nice and stable, and we have a cuff weight underneath our distal aspect of our humerus. So what we're going to start with is in a maximal loose pack position for the humeral ulnar joint, and that's going to be 70 degrees of flexion, 10 degrees of supination. Our traction direction is going to be what? It's going to be at that 45 degree angle. And ideally, when we're placing the belt, because that tendency of patients wanting to anteriorly tilt their scapula, it's a better thing if you can get that belt to come up and over the shoulder. That way they're kind of locked in place and then the only motion you're going to get is with the elbow itself and not any other compensatory movements proximally. Okay, so here's showing the traction. I'm going to be starting in that maximal loose pack position. 70 degrees of flexion, 10 degrees of supination. My direction of mobilization is 45 degrees to the ulnar diaphysis. I'm going perpendicular to the concavity. So as I improve that motion, as I go further, I always have to make sure to change my direction that I'm always going 45 degrees from the ulna, wherever that ulna is. Now, if my goal is trying to get more mobility, I can do a grade three where I'm oscillating here, and there's no research to show what's the ideal hold time for an oscillation. So, you know, go until you get tired, until the patient says, okay, I'm starting to have enough. When we look at, though, for static holds, there was a study done on rabbit tendon that, that found that to uncoil the collagen, if you held it for 40 seconds for six repetitions, that maximally stretched that collagen. And how I explain that to patients, whether they're doing passive stretching or I'm doing a mobilization technique with that static hold, is I tell them, it's like I've got some ramen noodles that are they're dry, that they're all coiled up and I put them in hot boiling water, and what does that do? As we watch, as that starts to boil, those noodles start to relax and start to stretch out, and that's exactly what we're doing with that joint capsule. We're trying to gain that extensibility back. <music>